Inverse is restricted to a certain domain. And the reason is, is because if we use our horizontal line test, say for example like this, it passes the graph at more than one point, which means that the inverse is not a function. Okay, so if we want the inverse to be a function, we have to restrict this domain such that it passes that horizontal line test. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna look at just this part right here, from here to here. So for sine, that's gonna be from negative pi over two to positive pi over two. So that's gonna be the part that we're interested in. So when you use your calculator to find the sine inverse, or the arc sine, as it's sometimes called, it's, your calculator is only gonna give you an answer from negative 90 to positive 90, negative pi over two to positive pi over two, just in this quadrant here and this quadrant here. If it ends up in the fourth quadrant, it's not gonna give you an angle, you know, all the way around here between 270 and 360. It's actually gonna give it to you as a negative angle because you can see you're just going here to the left, negative, okay? Now for cosine, again, you can see cosine fails the horizontal line test, right? This continues on, it's gonna fail that, that horizontal line test. But if we restrict it from here to here, okay, so that's from zero to pi, Okay, we're just looking at this piece of the graph right there. Then it passes that horizontal line test, so it does have an inverse. So on the unit circle, that would equate to zero to pi. That would be these the first and second quadrants. And then for tangent, again, tangent also fails the horizontal line test. But if we just look at from negative pi over two to positive pi over two, just this branch right here, just this little part of the, the graph, just like uh, sine, Okay, if we restrict it from negative pi over two to positive pi over two, then it's a function. Okay, so that's something to uh, pay attention to, but let's uh, take a look at some problems now. So why would you even need to use the inverse trigonometric functions? Well, use the inverse trigonometric functions whenever you're trying to solve for a missing angle. So say we wanted to find out what this angle is here. What we would do is we'd say, all right, what trig function ties together the opposite side and the hypotenuse? Well, that's gonna be sine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. We wanna get this angle by itself, so we're gonna take the sine inverse of both sides of the equation, okay, to keep it balanced. These are inverses, theta equals the sine inverse of 5 thirteenths. So let's go to our calculator now. Let's see what that comes out to in radians. So that comes out to sine inverse 5 thirteenths 0.39. Okay, so 0.39. So what that means is that you're gonna be right about here, 0.39 radians, okay? So that's that angle right there. Okay, now let's do some, let's solve some equations now. Okay, so we found this angle. Let's solve some equations. We wanna find out where sine equals 0.8. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the arc sine, arc sine is the same as this notation here, the sine minus one, the sine inverse, arc sine of sine of x equals the arc sine of 0.8. Okay, so these are inverses, we get our angle by itself. Let's go to the calculator again. So we're gonna take the arc sine of 0.8 and we get 0.93. Okay, so 0.93 radians. Now where is 0.93 radians? on the unit circle. Well, it's gonna be right about here, okay? So that's 0.93. But where else is sine positive? In the second quadrant. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw that same triangle, okay, the same triangle. This reference angle is 0.93, but remember when we measure angles, we measure from the positive x-axis, counterclockwise if it's positive. So this is gonna be 0.93, this point here is actually going to be pi minus 0.93. See how we went past that point and we went back? So that's going to be 0.93 or pi minus 0.93, which is 3.14 minus 0.93. And we can see what that is. 3.14 minus 0.93, 2.21. Okay. So those are our two answers on the unit circle. So the calculator only gave us that first answer because it was from negative pi over two to positive pi over two is in that restricted domain. So you have to realize that your calculator is only gonna give you that one solution. 
it's up to you to find out where else is sign positive or where else would that uh, value be on the unit circle. So let's do another example. Uh, tangent of x equals 0.2. Okay, so let's do the tan inverse. Okay, everybody has their preferred notation, either the minus one notation or the arc notation, but we'll just do the tan inverse of both sides. Okay, these are inverses, so we get x equals the tangent inverse of 0.2. I'll do that on the calculator here. Okay, we get about 0 0.20 approximately. So it almost, it's almost exactly the same, 0 0.197, 0 0.197 radians. Okay, but, oh, this is negative 0.2. Let's do that again. Tangent inverse of negative 0.2. It's negative 0.197. Okay, so where is tangent negative? It's negative in the second quadrant and the fourth quadrant. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw another unit circle here. So we've got uh, negative 0.197, so that's gonna be here, okay? And that's also gonna be here. So this reference angle is 0.197 Okay, now, depending on the question, how it's phrased, they'll say, find all solutions from zero to two pi. So if that's the case, we're going this direction, which is a positive angle. So that's gonna be pi minus 0.197. See, because we're going past, it's pi, which is 180 degrees, okay, minus the 0.197. So that's one solution. The other solution over here, we're gonna go actually two pi, so we went all the way around two pi, and then we went a little bit too far, so we have to back up or subtract off the 0.197. So those are your two solutions right there. So again, just make sure that when you're working with the arc sine or the arc tangent, okay, that you're gonna get a solution that's from negative pi over two to positive pi over two. Arc cosine, you're gonna be from zero to pi. And then what you wanna do is you wanna analyze on the unit circle what other quadrants you know, would that angle occur in and go ahead and find those solutions as well. All right, so this has been a video about how to work with um, inverse trig functions. I'll see you in the next video.